I'd like to welcome you to the uh, fourth IUS Tedris POWG that uh, we have as we progress toward STS 26. I think most of you have been to, to all of them. I see a lot of familiar faces out there. Uh, the last POWG you remember that we had was back in November, and we've been running these about every six months. Uh, we had the uh, FOR uh, for uh, 26T just a few months ago, and we'll talk about what we'll uh, schedule later, but the next POWG will probably be in the uh, January of uh, 88 time frame, based on what our current schedule is for the STS 26 launch. The minute taker uh, for today is uh, Mr. Zelton Eubank. Zelton is uh, sitting right here next to me. I'll remind you that uh, all presenters uh, should uh, provide a copy of their view graphs to Zelton so that we can get that in the minutes. My name is Steve Gibson. I'm the lead timeline on this flight, and uh, I'm going to go through the, uh, the CAP uh, status. On my next formal publication is the uh, basic CAPS for always in uh, January 88, and that's uh, based on the OIE B load. It's, uh, has, it's going to take into account the new launch date, June 2nd. And uh, we don't have a preliminary for this uh, flow. I can be took that out. Uh, I guess it was SC8 out of the uh, M2P2. As far as the uh, 26A flow, which was which is the OI88, uh, there are no major flight design changes from the uh, 26T um, flow. So that means we will be using the 26T basic revenue cap uh, for the November SIM. Uh, We're doing a lot of SIMs, integrated and joint integrated, between now and then. Right, now that, well, any SIMs that are going to be using 61, uh, 26, yeah, it's going to be that. using this this cap, basic revenue. What about some things that might change the way we do business in the IUS world that ought to be in there for these SIMs? Well, we... 60 minutes deploy sequence. Why not? It's transparent. It's not going to be, not gonna be instituted in any of the flight design including the SMS load until January. That's right. Or the, you know, the SIM date following January. I think that the readiness date was somewhere, we had an, an IRT date of sometime after January, like in March or something for that SIM. So you won't be seeing the 60 minutes step sequence. Probably a little bit anyway. Mm -hmm. At what point in the, we, we have four GIS in the schedule this year. For what GIS will you start using 26A uh, or 26T basic? Okay, well, all the ones that's in, until um, our new cap comes out, which is in January. I think these sims start in March, I think, when we use that. So probably all of the sims up until the March time frame will probably we'll use the basic revenue. And, and if there are any changes between now and then, we could either send back or, you know, PCNs. Most likely get sent back. Any other questions? That's all I have. I'm Fisher Reynolds, the IUS Deploy Book Manager, and all I've done right here is kind of give a status of uh, outstanding 482s to the checklist that uh, 482s that have been out since the PCN1 that we used for the Rev A PCN1 that we used for the SIM, the long SIM. As far as <coughs> publications uh, you, saw the, you saw in the schedule that uh, we've got a, a Rev B coming out in January to support the FOR. What I'm planning on doing right now, and this is, you know, depending on how things go, uh, we've got the Rev A PCN1, and then we've got all these 42s. As the SIMs come up, I will begin incorporating these uh, 42s into SIM packs and putting them out in support of the SIMs. If it looks like we're getting <coughs> whole lot of SIM packs with a lot of extra paper floating around, we would definitely consider either formally publishing a PCN or another, or a revision B early. For this first SIM that's coming up next month, we will not have any formal publication. We will have a SIM pack because there is no way to get a publication out in time for that. And why don't, why don't we target something like the long SIM in October? To have, well, that's what I'm thinking. Decent. That's what I'm, I'm looking, if not to do <coughs> Can't do it for next month, but towards the end of the summer is when I would be doing it. Any questions? You're saying for where we got 24 hours that, that we'll do one hour on the LEH and. Uh, 
uh, 40 minutes in the suit, and for a 12 hour uh, uh, at 10.2, it's still one hour on the LEH and uh, 75 minutes in the suit? There, there are two options in the cabin. Uh, the initial prey breathe is always 60 minutes from the LEH. Uh, the, if the time at 10.2 is 12 hours, the final in suit prey breathe would be 75 minutes. Okay, that's true. Thank you. And uh, the, the only thing we wanted to raise was that if we have new flight crew equipment, that for space and mobility reasons, a lot of our protection. Uh, flight rules for oxygen or possible toxic environment are based on the LEH, and uh, we just wanted to raise that to, uh, due to mobility and ease of use. That's the way they did it into the rule. Okay, I wasn't aware that they were talking about changing the LEH. Okay. As a precautionary measure, if we fire off more than one bottle, it's because we've got a problem, or we we think very seriously we have a problem. So I'm wondering if we ought to be ought not to be testing that 0.3 percent, which is the one that that is more likely and less likely to be tied to a real problem, rather than testing to the 1 percent, which means you've got to, you probably have a serious orbit problem right then. Uh, that, that's a good point. We, we really, based on uh, funding and everything else, had to pick one level to study. What we have up front before the study would get going is a pilot study, and if there are already significant changes the first 24 hours, we'll, we'll look at the 1%. If there's something that uh, raises a flag after being exposed for 24 hours at 1%, uh, we'll back that level down. Okay, and that makes sense. Uh, I think Rick's point is a good one, though. It's, uh, uh, you know, what I'm really worried about is the case where we put a bottle in and we really don't have a fire. If we have a fire, we're probably coming home the next PLS anyhow. But we need what you just talked about a while ago the capability if we get one up accidentally to keep on going. And if that's 3,200 parts per million or 1% or whatever it is, we need to find out what level we're going to clear uh, to still fly with. I guess one other question I had was, is there something better than how it, uh, Halon 1301 will I be flying with? What's the Navy using since they don't use that? Trip, I don't know of anything that's better. We've researched it quite a bit of times. Some people are using a 1301 and, and a is it a 1211 mixture? But uh, most of the avionics are using that mixture. That just, but there with the uh, 1200,000, I mean, 1200 unit in there, that just increases the explosion, makes it expel faster. I'd like to uh, take just a minute to go around the table and uh, and introduce the key players. Let me introduce the uh, the free board chairman. This is my boss. Uh, a lot of you know Earl Earl Thompson, branch chief for for DH6. I think uh, we'll go ahead and get some preliminaries out of the way, and then Earl's got uh, some comments to say uh, after we do the introduction. I'm John Lovelace, uh, <coughs> sitting in for Bill Gine from Goddard, and uh, also supporting us from Goddard is Dave Christopher from uh, KSC. Matt Lake from the Fevers <coughs> Program Office. <laughs> Mike Lounge, flight crew. Dave Hill, flight crew. Uh, I'm Bob Schaff, the lead flight activities officer. In You'll meet everybody else in the floor during the presentation because they're all book managers or flight data files. Are we reacting to a sim problem? Yes. And if on the day of when we go fly and we haven't disabled auto thermal shutdown, but we have had some type of shutdown, <coughs> and we do a recovery and it goes blam and shuts itself right back down, the right thing to do is to Wait. Just to wait and understand what it is before we screw up something. Instead of reacting to a one specific type failure thing that we saw in a sense. And there's no rush in that type of, in that, where's mine? In that type of time. I think we're just reacting to a sim case, a specific sim case. And if it happens again, we'll handle it just like we did in a sim. Right? And we'll look at it. You will have gotten a burst of data, probably but not certainly, and we'll think about whether we want to... It took us a long time in the sim to sort it out. Well, we've seen the case now. We did good. The sim taught us, right? I think we ought to not do this. I, I would actually agree with Powell. That's right. I, I just wanted to get it resolved. Okay. <laughs>
That hurts me to say that. That's, no, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this next one is uh, a small item. Right now, the last part of the uh, recovery procedure, recovery from power down, uh, essentially says perform CIQ safety status. Right here, Jim. Okay. Right, have the next slide, please. We'll talk about flight rules and uh, launch commit criteria. Ed Gonzalez has already talked about uh, all the data on this slide. I'd like to talk about the only one remaining open topic and it's not an issue, it's something that I'm, as I understand it's in the PIP process. Uh, uh, teachers folks have reduced the size of their eclipse constraint from the large top hat to uh, real small uh, uh, eclipse constraints and as I understand they're going to be submitting or they have submitted a PIP change and it's uh, starting the review process here. Just a heads up that that's going to be uh, being addressed. We don't see from the op standpoint any problem with it at all. Next slide please. The launch commit criteria uh, from the orbiter side as far as the payload operations uh, related activities there's been no changes since the uh, last mission. From the control center again there's no changes since the last uh, the last mission from the payload uh, driven changes. On the IUS again there's no changes. Uh, as I understand from our discussion just last week uh, there's been some agreements to go back and uh, uh, look at the automatic launch hold cut off of that from T minus 31 second or 10 seconds back to 31 but currently is what's documented is uh, at uh, 31 second or 10 seconds rather. C stick uh, there's no changes there uh, as far as their uh, documentation of launch holes for network and facilities and the flight rules. Uh, they still uh, can hold uh, the count for those functions down to L minus nine minutes and after that uh, we won't hold the facilities. Next slide please. White Sands has been one small change. Uh, it's up here. They're, uh, they want to hold, they've always uh, had a hold in there uh, for, uh, based upon the deploy time. They want to have us back up uh, about two hours. They want to be back up not later than two hours prior to deploy. No more questions? Rick, can you, you happy? We're all in the gym. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Good chat.